welcome back to the White Horse Works. My name is Peter Sporer and today we're going to radio control a live steam AccuCraft Victory locomotive. This is a very interesting locomotive. It's not easy to radio control but it, when radio controlled it's absolutely a superb runner. So here's the locomotive and this is the complete set of radio control equipment that we will be installing into the loco. It comes from Steve Foster of Foswex. There are three basic sections. The radio control section, the steelwork that supports the radio control, and also I found it necessary in this locomotive to put a heat screening system because it gets terribly hot inside these side tanks where some of the equipment goes. So let's have a look at the Foswex radio control kit. The radio control equipment is an Omni 3 with an RX3, a 4.8 volt battery pack with a little fuse, an on switch wiring loom and two servos which are mounted in the side tanks in this fashion. So the first thing we need to do is to test it. We turn on the transmitter, turn on the receiver and if we look at the little servo links there when we turn the knobs there's the servo moving and the other knob there's the servo moving. We know now that the radio control system works. These are all the components which took weeks and weeks of development to end up creating the kit. These of course are the linkages that go to the servo and the servos are mounted on three pillars on the side of the side tank which we'll show you later. The locomotive gets rather hot so we have to fit some heat shields to the inside of the locomotive along with some asbestos or simulated asbestos. Now this locomotive costs an awful lot of money so we must look after it as we take it apart. And all you need is a very simple padded frame. So, so here's the underside of the locomotive and we've got to remove six 3mm bolts here, here and here and the same on the other side. They provide a little tool for this in the toolkit, but I find it a little fiddly to use. It's a box spanner at the end. I prefer to use a 3mm screwdriver, one like this, from my own tool set. Very simply, we just unscrew them. And with a pair of tweezers, pick them out and put them in the tray. Now you can see we have a tray here for parts but it also has a little sub tray inside it and that's to put the nuts and bolts in. So here's the last screw to be undone or should I say little bolt. There it is. So all six have now been removed. Note I keep the tools I'm using in the tray and we turn it over. Before removing the superstructure first we've just got to remove the little cover from here. If you've got a great western vehicle it's done with one allen screw. They have a different style little bonnet covering the safety valve. There's the little cover off. This, this should be now free to remove. We just pull out the two rails from the front and there's the nice neat little cover all removed. After removing the body you're left with these two handrails. Be a good idea to push them both down out of the way so they can't get broken off. Now I'd like you to have a look at the right hand running plate of the locomotive. There are three holes and it's on those holes that we're going to mount the servos. To do the first stage we're going to install the two servos and they're mounted on these three pillars. One of them is long and two of them are shorter and one has a little cut in it. We have four little washers that we're going to mount in the servos. These live just there. Do it to all of them and they go up in these three millimeter holes. They can become filled with paint so you might just need to drill them clean at three millimeters. 
and the columns will now go on there. First the long column, followed by the one with the little ding in it. You'll find out what the ding is for in a minute. And now we're going to mount the servos here and like this. So there they are, all mounted up. Good time to give them a little test. I've plugged it together into its battery and receiver. And here's the controller turned on. And if we turn the controls, there's the throttle servo moving, and there's the forward and the reverse servo moving. All ready for the next stage. Now to fit the link rods. These will connect the servos to the throttle and the other servo to the forward and reverser. But we've got to do some modifications here first. First of all, remove this nut. So now it's free to move. Now we have to remove this little circlip by putting a screwdriver into it and just pushing gently and Take care because a spring comes off as you can see. Loosen off on the servo screws, then take the linkage, feed it through the servo and back. At the other end of the link arm, if the fitting doesn't line up with the little pin, just screw it in more until finally it does line up. This is followed by the spring, the washer and the little clip. So there's the washer in place and now we use the magnetism of the screwdriver to just slot it into place and very carefully press it home. Now for a quick test there it is, forwards, reverse. Well that's the forward and reverse dealt with. Now we've got to do the regulator. And we're going to have to drill a little hole on the end of the handle here, so we need to remove this from the loco. First close the regulator, and then use an Allen key to remove it. Mark off a spot, 8 millimeters down the arm, and with a punch, Give it a ding. Then place it in a secure vise and drill it out with the drill bit size the same or just a little bit bigger than the reach rod, which in this case is 1.8 millimeters. There we go. After drilling the hole, do two little chamfers on both sides. And now back onto the model. So we've drilled our little hole in the regulator handle. The regulator is closed and we just put the lever on but leave it so it's freely rotating on the shaft. We now take the link, turn on the transmitter and make the regulator so the servo is fully back. So the servo is shut we know the shaft is shut, so now let's connect the link put on the shaft, put the lever on, <coughs> screw it up and now when we turn the regulator there it is operating shut, wide open. We just, just put the little retainer nut on using a pair of tweezers. When I'm satisfied with this here I'll put a spot of nail varnish on there to stop it coming off. 
Lovely. So there we have it. <clears throat> There's the regulator. Four fast open, closed. Any infinitely variable position. And of course, reverse and forwards. And that would be neutral. Now we've got to install the radio kit.